of my fabulous, beautiful people, and how are you all doing today? I hope that today you are doing very, very well. I am about to ruin that for all of you people out there that hate the anti-vax community as much as I do. I am very sorry, kind of hashtag sorry, not sorry, because we have to talk about this today. Modern alternative mama has lost her goddamn mind again. And as we know, every time that this woman loses her mind and starts announcing anti-vax things, I am right there, Kate. So without further ado, let's just roll this intro and then we're going to get right into her cringe. From, of course, Earthly Wellness. For those that do not know, Earthly Wellness is Kate's Modern Alternative Mama's multi-level marketing company that she hides behind being an affiliate program, but then after you sign up for it and you start doing all the things that you're supposed to be doing, you quickly realize that it's actually an MLM. We keep seeing this more and more. Those of us that speak out against these companies keep seeing people pretending to be affiliate programs that are actually MLMs now. It's like the new thing that they're trying to do to trick you. She sent this wonderful email here trying to trick us into doing detox. Yes, she did. It says, is detox really possible? Now, some people might be like, but queen, why do you hate the fact that this woman wants to drink some stuff and then just spend all day having diarrhea on the toilet? I mean, how is that hurting anyone? No. No, Megan. No! No! Look away! <laughs> Megan, no! Look away! Oh. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll get into that. Can you really detox? You might have heard that there isn't a need to detox because it's a naturally occurring process, and this is true. Okay, full stop, end of article. Moving on with our day. No, why does this continue, Kate? But in today's world, our bodies are bombarded with toxins on a daily, sometimes hourly basis. The toxic load ugh. coming out of me like lava. The mainstream life puts on a body is often more than it can handle. Our bodies are amazing and can do a lot of detoxing and healing. But there are problems with overloading toxins and not supporting detox. For starters, detoxing begins in the gut. Oh. Our gut lining protects the rest of the body from toxins, quote unquote, leaking out. Coming out of me like lava into the bloodstream and other tissues. I'm gonna be doing a whole video on the whole gut health thing and what I think about that. Don't you worry, it's a bunch of bull hooey. Ingesting foods with pesticides like glyphosate erodes that protective lining. When we inject something into the tissues and blood, we have already skipped step one. Toxins accumulate among the cells in our tissue and go into the lymphatic system and then the following problem can occur. Oxidative stress and congested lymphatic system. <gasps> oh no, not that. But what are these toxins that people are just injecting into their tissues and blood? We need to help the kidneys, liver, and lymphatic system so they can handle the extra workload. Oh! This is where we want to help you. Natural, safe, gentle, and effective options that help your body do what it was made to do. We choose herbs that are known for supporting the liver, kidneys, and lymphatic flow so you can gently detox without feeling worse. You mean without sitting on the toilet for 10 hours just shitting out my colon? Oh! A great bonus! If you hurry, you can catch it while it is still on sale. It ends at midnight. For more on detox, our vaccine detox protocol is free right now. What do you mean vaccine detox, Kate? What would I need to do that for? Oh, that's because... You're talking about a vaccine detox sale. And if you use code DETOX2022, you get a whole 20% off. Oh, yay. Down at Earthly Wellness. Yeah. Don't forget to get their gut health oil along with the vaccine detox to make sure that you really stay on the shitter all night long. Coming out of me like lava. 
So again, it comes with the gut health oil, a detox bath, vaccine detox, and then learn to homestead respiratory remedies. The gut health oil is $11.99 plus. Worried about parasites, yeast, and other gut health issues? Our gut health oil helps to fight those and gently bring the gut back into balance with only four organic ingredients. It's clean, simple, and effective. And here we have the detox bath for $9.99. What better way? way to support your elimination pathways than with a relaxing soak. Try our herbal detox bath. This blend of herbs promotes liver and lymphatic health by helping to improve toxins in their natural exits. Experience better sleep and a general feeling of wellness with this bath. Did you know we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee so there's no risk to try something new? And then we also have the Vaccine Detox Herbal Extract, which is $11.99 plus. Vaccine Detox is a herbal tincture that helps to restore wellness post-vaccination by supporting gut health. Whether you have taken a vaccine recently or in the past, had a vaccine injury, or are simply looking to detox from the toxins around you, this tincture is for you. Today is the last day of our vaccine detox sale. Use code DETOX2022 now for 20% off. I want to stay in touch. Not really, Kate, but you know, I do like getting these emails so that I know what to speak out about and so that I know what it is that you are doing. What the hell is the detox guide? Say hello to healing. You get 20% off our top natural detox products. It claims that it will promote liver and digestive health, cleanse and detox your body naturally, organic and hypo allergenic. Uh-huh. Ready to detox and experience better health? Find out what you really need to know before you get started. This guide offers insight into the most important part of a detox, including do you need to detox? I'll save you all the time right now. The answer is no. How to support your major detox pathways, detoxing myths and truths. Foods and herbs to help you heal the best supplements to use and how supportive therapies and when slash if they're worth it printables to track your plan and progress, and more. This guide has 170 plus studies to ensure the info is accurate and science-based. That's bullshit because nothing here is science-based. Oh! We break down complex topics, address your key questions, and help you through your detox process naturally. Great idea to detoxify. Is it good on chemo? on for children? Did they see the problem with having products like this on the market? I found this to be helpful. An introductory, informal brochure that is helpful in discussing the main areas of the body that are designed for detox and the food slash herbs that can aid in the process. Well done. No, Kate, you don't like talking to me on here. We've done this a few times, sweetheart. Check out my other videos about that. Add to cart. Check out. Here we have an entire vaccine detox protocol guide, if you will. And yes, it does come from Earthly Wellness. They say here we're on a mission. It's a simple mission, but one that will take a lot of time and a lot of work. And we'd love for you to join us. We believe that health is sacred and so very personal. Every individual should be empowered to care for him or herself and take care of his or her body alone, at least most of the time. Many health modalities exist, yet the Western world is dominated by just one of them, allopathic. There's absolutely a time and place for this system, but it's not always the best option. Further, many people feel scared of exploring alternatives. They've been told they don't work or are dangerous. They've been disempowered from caring for themselves and their families, even when it comes to the simple stuff. And some families have even been bullied or mistreated by the system. Oh my, it's time for a change. At Earthly, we want to be part of that change. It's our goal to educate and empower people to take care of their own health. And because access to health promoting products matters as much as education, we produce herbal remedies and body care that support health naturally. The statements and products in this publication have not been evaluated by the FDA and are not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure anything. About the authors, Kate, <laughs> lead herbalist and CMO at Earthly, has more than 10 years of experience working with and independently researching herbs. Kate is well known 
in the natural living community with more than 73,000 followers on her blog, Modern Alternative Mama, where she shares her research, advice, and do-it-yourself tips for herbal remedies. Kate's greatest passion is inspiring and empowering people to live healthy and productive lives naturally. She is also the co-author of Natural Remedies for Kids. Yeah, she is. August 2015, Quattro Press, along with Dr. Bob Zajac, a board-certified pediatrician. The book shares the most effective natural make-at-home remedies for the most common children's ailments. When Kate isn't busy making new herbal products at Earthly, hosting local make-it-and-take nights, or blogging ad researching, yeah, she's, she's blogging ad researching. Yep, look at the spelling of that one. She's taking care of her six children on her 10-acre homestead in Ohio. You can read about Kate's personal journey to healing her gut and balancing hormones on her blog. <laughs> we do, don't you worry. Serena Ray Santos is the writing assistant. Serena Ray is the founder of the Holistic Hippie blog, with three Ps apparently, dedicated to natural health and plant-based eating. Her journey to natural health began in 2019 when she swayed away from allopathic medicine after becoming wheelchair-bound due to the side effects of 20-plus medications from complex regional pain syndrome, CRPS, and dizziness due to nystagmus as the source of her many health complications. Yes, it, it was the medicines that did it, not the health ailment, uh, apparently. Arena's symptoms diminished after adopting a healthier lifestyle surrounding whole foods and herbs, leaving her a fantastic quality of life and a passion for educating people. Yes, you heard that correctly. Serena here cured herself. <laughs> she cured herself from the CRPS with these uh, whole foods and herbs. <laughs> That's why you need to read these books and listen to these people. Part 1. Do you need a vaccine detox? I mean, do ya? Signs of a vaccine injury. <gasps> Vaccines are a hot topic in our culture right now. I mean, like, not really. I'm pretty sure we all are in agreement that they're for good, other than you crazies. But anyway, on one side, the loudest side are the doctors. Those silly doctors and politicians who say that everyone needs to get every vaccine available with few if any exceptions they deny that vaccines have any real side effects beyond a sore arm and when people experience side effects they say the vaccine didn't cause it who are these people like we've always been tracking any of the vaccine injuries i don't know what's going on on the opposite side are the people who are urging caution about vaccines. Yes, there is an us versus them mentality and apparently Kate here is on the good side. <laughs> there are not one size fits all. No, no, no. The decision should be based on peer-reviewed studies and examine one's personal health history. And yet, this idea is controversial. <gasps> it's mind-boggling that forced vaccines are considered rational, but questions are not. I don't remember anyone ever saying that you weren't allowed to ask questions about the vaccine or find out more information. I'm just saying. Vaccine injuries occur, and no one knows how frequently. Just that it's far more than one in a million, as the government claims. Many people have experienced new onset health issues within days or weeks after vaccination. When this happens, the mainstream's only suggestion is that it is a coincidence and to use pharmaceuticals to manage the symptoms. But there is real help out there, natural support. That's what this guide is for. Dun -dun -dun -dun. How do you know if you need to detox? Some post-vaccination symptoms include. Yes, we are talking about detoxing after a vaccine. We are not just talking about detoxing to clear out the toxins in our gut, as a lot of these MLM products do out here, like the ones from It Works that do detox. This is specifically for vaccine detoxification. Oh! <laughs> So, apparently, uh, the symptoms include headaches, new or worse, facial asymmetry, left side drooping, fatigue, new or worse, muscle weakness, loss of motor control, behavioral issues, new or worse, mood swings, acne breakouts, new or worse, skin rashes, high fever, back arching, high-pitched screaming, food allergies, new, diarrhea, new or chronic, seizures, tics, sensory issues, eczema, trouble sleeping, autoimmune issues, yes, tics, and seizures. Tics. 
Yep, yep, a apparently the vaccines cause Tourette's. These are not always from vaccines, but they can be. Okay, just. Why am I here, Kate? None are quote unquote normal and detox may help improve health. If you're looking for COVID vaccine detox information, the Shedding Tool Guide is a great place to start. Oh God, now I gotta read that too. Stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe. <laughs> How to report a vaccine injury. Call the policia, la policia. No, that's not actually how you do it. Go to the CDC. Oh, wait. Don't do that either. What about the vaccine adverse event reporting system? Why would you do that? That would be silly. Oh, no, no. No, no, that's not what you do. But well, let's see what, what Kate here says to do. Oh. <laughs> Kate here says the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, VAERS, is a website surveilled by the CDC. VAERS was established in 1990 as a national early warning system to detect possible safety problems in U.S. licensed vaccines. Then she states the primary objectives of them are to detect new, unusual, or rare vaccine adverse events, monitor increases in known adverse events, identify potential patient risk factors for particular types of adverse events, assess the safety of newly licensed vaccines, vaccines, determine and address possible reporting clusters, example, suspected, localized, temporarily, or geographically, or product, batch, lot, specific, adverse event reporting, recognize persistent, safe use problems and administration errors, and provide a national safety monitoring system that extends to the general population to respond to public health emergencies, such as a large-scale pandemic influenza vaccination program. And yes, that is according to the VAERS website. Very good, Kate, you can copy and paste. Vaccine injury is not one in a million, according to Kate here. The idea behind this statement is for every one in a million doses given in the US, one person is compensated for injury in vaccine court. Uh, no, no okay. Studies have shown that not even 1% of adverse vaccine events are reported. As of September 2022, there have been 1,636,560 adverse events reported to VAERS. So then how do you report this damn vaccine injury, Kate? Reporting a vaccine adverse event is as simple as going onto the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System website surveilled by the CDC. You should always inform your healthcare provider if you're experiencing an adverse event. They are required by law to report any adverse event listed in the VAERS table of reportable events following vaccination that occurs within the specified period after vaccines. An adverse event recorded by the vaccine manufacturer as a contradiction to further doses of the vaccine. They're only strongly encouraged to report any adverse event that occurs after the administration of a vaccine licensed in the United States where it is or is not clear that a vaccine caused the adverse event or vaccine administration errors. If you suspect a vaccine injury has occurred, we suggest reporting vaccine adverse events yourself instead of depending on your healthcare provider. You can write your or a family member's adverse event in one two ways. Number one, submit a VAERS report online here. And number two, download a writable PDF form from a computer here. Okay. From a computer. Just a computer anywhere. Can you actually detox? The mainstream, that awful mainstream, will tell you detoxing isn't possible. For instance, the Guardian states, There's no such thing as detoxing. In medical terms, it's a nonsense. Diet and exercise is the only way to get healthy. Notice how they didn't mention vaccines. Are you fucking kidding me right now, Kate? Are you- Oh, oh lord, help me. <laughs> They go on to say how all detoxes are fads and state. Detoxing, the idea that you can flush your system of impurities and leave your organs squeaky clean and raring to go. Let one go, let one go, can't hold it in anymore. Is a scam. Queen of Spades strongly agrees in that sentiment that it is very much a scam. But Kate here says that's a bit of an exaggeration on the purpose of detoxification. Nonetheless, why do you think the patient is expected to cleanse their colon with excessive use of Miralax before a colonoscopy? Let one go! Oh. Um... Do you really want me to explain that to you, Kate? It's a form of detoxification just using toxin-filled products. Kate, they need to put something up there! Okay, alright, I'm gonna get through this, I promise. 
The mainstream acknowledges that enhancing and rejuvenating the body's natural detoxification system is possible. But would improving your detoxification system in turn result in detoxing the body? Kate somehow skipped grade 10 biology class. If your detoxification pathways are clogged or not being supported properly, they can't detox. Some of these so-called fads are enhancing and rejuvenating what your body is naturally supposed to be doing. The thing is, these bodily functions may be hindered due to everyday toxic exposure. Listen, if something's going on in your body that is stopping your body from detoxing naturally, that means that there is something going on in your body that you need to go and take care of and go to the hospital. Drinking one of these stupid drinks, it's not going to help you. We aren't suggesting taking Miralax. No, you want them to take your goddamn earthly wellness detox products instead, Kate. But we want to provide a regimen intended to remove toxins and impurities from the body. Just as the actual definition means. Although many mainstream sources will say detoxing isn't possible, thankfully, the science in this guide states otherwise. The science in, in this guide here, we're supposed to just believe what these two women said. Again, neither one of them are educated in this whatsoever, but they have written this guide, and therefore, we are to just take it as science. Oh, that's a big boy, isn't he? DETOX! We need to understand what detoxing does. <laughs> Not a whole fucking lot. The end. Before you start a detox, let's further understand what a detox is. A repetitive, Kate. A detox helps first to open overburdened detox pathways. Liver, kidneys, lymphatic, and bowel. These pathways are in our bodies to help us detox from all the junk in the world around us. Ah! Like, what are you eating in the world around you? Kate over here just going out and eating out of the garbage cans everywhere. But if we are exposed to many toxins at once, they can become sluggish and overworked. The first step is to help them get working normally again by drinking a drink instead of going to the hospital and doing something. Anyway, the second part of a detox is removing toxins from body parts where they have been stored. Fat, muscles, lymphatic fluid, blood, or even the brain. That's the problem here, isn't it, Kate? You got too many toxins stored in your goddamn brain, and then you wrote this guide. It can be dangerous to knock these toxins loose if the detox organs aren't open and working correctly, because then the body can't eliminate the toxins. Let one go! Which can circulate and cause further damage. Ah! Many detox plans don't emphasize this enough, and Kate's emphasizes it too much. Our detox plan focuses heavily on unburdening the detox pathways. This first part is safe enough for anyone to do because Kate said so. Basically, that's all we're going. Source, Kate. Ah! Anyway. Woosa, queen. Woosa. Let one go. Because it simply removes any ongoing sources of toxin exposure and helps the body to return to normal functioning. Even pregnant and nursing women and young children can do this, Kate! What do you fucking mean? Unburdening these natural detox pathways is done with certain foods, baths, light exercise, and herbs. Start here, don't skip ahead. Don't worry, I want to know every single thing you say in this. Oh look, it's time to detox! Oh. Part two, this versus facts with modern alternative mama. Need I say more? This versus facts, number one. Crappy food, pollution, medication, etc. are why we need to detox. While crappy food, pollution, medication, and etc. aren't good for us and certainly don't promote health, these aren't the root cause of problems. The root cause of problems is that our detox pathways become congested and stop functioning as they should. Our bodies are meant to self-detox. <laughs> The end. No, again, we keep going. They're not meant to need regular cleanses or support. Overloading our bodies with the toxicity in our modern world makes things challenging. If we're toxic and staying toxic, 
even when we change our diets and habits. Something else happens. Our natural detox pathways are broken. This entire book is fucking toxic, Kate. All this to say, the number one detox mistake is not supporting the body's natural detox pathways. Learn more about the number one detox mistake here. You're supposed to tell us in the damn book, Kate. I'm not, why do I have to click links to read through a guide? Oh, how cute. Number two. Harsh cleanses and detoxes are necessary to be effective. Detoxing is an all or nothing. <laughs> Suppose you have any chronic symptoms or diseases, you know, like constipation, fatigue, heartburn, stomach aches, and etc. Those are definitely not going to happen when you do a fucking detox, though. It's happening. It's happening. Happen. In that case, these are signs that the body is no longer functioning optimally and something has built up. So drink our drinks instead of going to the hospital. Stupid. Whether your symptoms are minor or severe, if you have symptoms, there is a reason for them and an underlying cause. Beginning a detox diet of some type will be a good starting place. Detoxing doesn't start and end at supplementation. Diets play a crucial role, but they don't have to be extreme. <laughs> Some detox diets include reducing eliminating grains, reducing eliminating sugars, including natural sugars, reducing eliminated toxic personal care products, which is most of them, including organic brands, starting the GAPS diet, consuming fermented foods like yogurt, water, kefir, kombucha. Kombucha? I don't think it's the same one I'm thinking of. Taking fermented cod liver oil, skin brushing, ouch, oil pulling anti-candida diets, fasting, juice or water. Other things can cause detox, but these are probably the most common reasons. What? Some people do a juice fast or commercial cleanse each year to improve their health and ultimately feel much better. It's like giving your car a tune-up. It just clears out the junk and helps you to function better. Number three, diet off her eczema and other detox symptoms are typical and necessary. Severe detox symptoms aren't typical, nor are they necessary. Die off and other harsh detox symptoms occur when toxins are released into your system. The toxins are stored in your fat, yeast cells, or other body parts. Once you begin the detox and start losing weight or killing off excess yeast, these stored toxins in your system are released. Gotta go and kill off the yeast so the stored toxins in your system are released. Sorry. There, kid, I wrote you a jingle. Additionally, when the body is shedding toxins faster than the liver and kidneys can keep up, this can cause damage in the long run. If die-off symptoms are moderate or severe, this would be considered a sign to back off go slower, and do more to support your liver, kidneys, and more, which we will discuss later. Whenever possible, avoid die-off symptoms. The goal is to eliminate toxins in your body, not allow them to swirl around and cause more harm. Like, duh, Karen! Ideally, detox symptoms should be minor or non-existent. Mild fatigue and slight nausea are normal. No. <laughs> Lovely. The beer nausea is not. Detox! With the lemon, apparently. Number four. You cannot detox while pregnant and breastfeeding. Eight. What am I about to read, Kate? <sighs> Indeed. You shouldn't do a harsh cleanse while pregnant or breastfeeding fast or use specific herbs. Many detox products or plans on the market use these things, so it's not a good idea to do those while pregnant or breastfeeding. Instead, it's important to remember a good detox starts with healthy liver and kidney support, which can be safely done while pregnant and breastfeeding. Supporting the body gently and naturally promotes overall health and wellness and isn't harsh. We think it's better to do this if needed while pregnant and breastfeeding because whatever's in your body affecting you is already affecting your baby too. Why not try to improve your health and, by extension, your baby's health? You don't care about your goddamn baby if you don't come over here and join my MLM company and then start doing these detox with my products, okay? And this is again coming from the woman who does not take her child to the hospital when they break a limb for several days. Throwing that out there. Keep it gentle. Focus on supporting your gut, liver, and kidneys, and skip strict diets and harsh supplements. Learn more about detoxing while pregnant and breastfeeding here. In future, I guess I'm gonna have to, aren't I? I need to make sure that you're not about to KILL PEOPLE, KATE! Oh, for fuck's sakes, KATE! I just want a break for one day. One day! One, one day for people trying to steal money from people or steal 
people's lives and livelihoods and Jesus can just one day. Number five is children and babies cannot detox. It's apparently a myth and I just it's not a myth. Don't do this to your children and your babies. I do I really have I have to do a video on this because I have to be worried that people are listening to this woman and then harming their own children. Don't listen to this woman at all when it comes to anything to do with parenting. Please, I beg you, world. I literally am down on my hands and knees. I beg you, do not listen to this advice I am about to read here. Please, if you never listen to me about anything in the world, listen to me right now. This is bad advice I'm about to read. She is going to say things here that are going to make me want to pull out the rest of my hair. We cannot have this. But it is important that we know what this woman is telling people to do and because of that I am going to take one for the team and read through this toxic book. Children and babies are a gray spot and vary on a case-to-case -case basis. A child's immune system system is fully developed between ages three and four. Children of this age are ideal candidates for detox. Jesus, Kate. It's best to start slow and steady, supporting the body and encouraging a gentle detox. Younger children can also be detoxed, but they must be taken with great care and supervised by a trusted and supportive physician when possible. My issue with this, of course, is that this is all about the vaccines and having your child or your baby detox due to getting a vaccine which vaccines are necessary okay and we just know that i have an issue with the whole anti-vax thing it's best not to detox young babies i would just say kate and do not detox young babies and children the end thank you that's my advice to all parents out there do not do detox on your young babies your children or, or even on yourselves. That's my advice. Usually, if young babies have health issues, it comes from their mom. Oh, gee, that's wonderful, Kate. That's definitely right. <laughs> Shut up, Trevor. Either from her health history, during pregnancy, or while breastfeeding. In that case, mom needs to work on herself. If the mom is breastfeeding, look into an elimination diet, which usually starts with eliminating dairy, gluten, and soy. If you're breastfeeding, you need a lot of dairy in your diet, so please don't do that. What kind of advice, Kate? Stop this madness. To ensure the baby is not sensitive to these foods and reacting to the mom's milk supply. The only time that that should be an issue is if there is actually something that the mom can pass on to the child via their milk supply, and whatever Kate's talking about here is not it. Or if your baby is actually lactose intolerant. That's the only time that something like this should ever even be looked into. Learn more regarding breastfeeding, elimination diets, and more in our Mother's Guide to Breastfeeding Nutrition, because Kate wrote a whole book on that. And yes, I can go through it. Let me know down below if you want me to torture myself with that book as well. Remember, everything mom consumes, the baby also consumes. Which is why the mom should probably also not be doing a detox while breastfeeding their baby. Again, I guess what do I know? As a last resort, the mom can always do a gentle detox, which would also help detox a baby if she's breastfeeding. Which again, why do we need to detox a baby? You know what I mean? If we are just talking about detoxing toxins and the likes, this baby is braided to the world. There is no way that they could be taken in enough toxins that everything's all clogged up and we would need to give them a detox, Kate. Stop this madness. In extreme cases, is this your son, Kate? Because you like to use your children and I don't like this. In extreme cases, older babies who can eat food and have severe toxicity symptoms can detox. Still, it's best to start slow and steady, supporting the body and encouraging a gentle detox. A gentle detox. Again, detoxes should be supervised by a trusted and supportive physician if possible. Part three of this hell is supporting your body. Supporting your liver. Part one. Lovely. The liver is the largest internal organ in the human body. It is a digestive organ that sits on the upper right side of the belly. Very scientific, Kate. Since the liver is the main organ involved in detoxification, it recognizes toxic substances and converts them into harmless material that can be released all in its its own and doesn't need help from weird products, especially from earthly wellness, just saying. <laughs>
The liver is responsible for more than 500 vital functions, including but not limited to. Bile production helps carry away waste and break down fats in the small intestine during digestion. Production of specific proteins for blood plasma. Production of cholesterol and unique proteins to help carry fats through the body. Conversion of ex excess glucose into glycogen for storage. Glycogen can later be converted back to glucose for energy and balancing and making glucose as needed. Regulation of blood levels of amino acids forms the building blocks of proteins. Hemoglobin is processed to use its iron content. The liver stores iron. Conversion of poisonous ammonia to urea. Urea is an end product of protein metabolism and is excreted in the urine, which is again why you shouldn't drink your urine. Go and watch my videos on urine therapy for more information about that. Clearing the blood of drugs and other poisonous substances. Regulating blood clotting and resisting infections by making immune factors and removing bacteria from the bloodstream. Clearance of bilirubin, also from red blood cells. If there is an accumulation of bilirubin, the skin and eyes turn yellow. Jaundice is what they call that. Supporting your liver. If the liver is blocked or sluggish, it will not detoxify. Supporting your liver is the first step in elimination, which is crucial signs of a sluggish liver. Headaches, pain in upper right side, bloating after eating, musty smelling breath, weight gain, nausea, poor sleep, dizziness, irritability, anxiety, depression, white coating on tongue, chemical sensitivity, hormone imbalances, fatigue. Oh my god, I think I have a sluggish liver. To learn more about the 16 signs of liver congestion, click here. The first step to unblocking the liver is to remove any ongoing toxic influences. In other words, get modern alternative mama out of your goddamn life. <laughs> Some toxic influences include chemical cleaners or air fresheners, artificial fragrances or perfumes, processed foods, GMOs, preservatives, colors, artificial flavors, refined grains, sugar, corn syrup, tap water, any water that contains chlorine, fluoride, and other toxins, and most medications, unless absolutely required. And Kate, I must ask you, what are the medications that you would consider to be absolutely required versus the medications that you would consider to not be required? I'm just wondering. Like your shampoo, toothpaste, makeup, skincare, and anything you use on your body or in your home. Removing further toxic influences will ease the burden on your liver. Earthly offers clean options for shampoo, detangler, deodorant, tooth powder, and more if you are unsure what to switch to. Of course they do. And of course you would try to sell some in the guide, wouldn't you, Kate? Supporting your liver. Foods for liver support. Beets, lemon, celery, broccoli, garlic, mushrooms, mango, grapefruit. Herbs for liver support. Dandelion root, peppermint leaf, turmeric root, burdock root. Milk thistle seed. Drinking freshly pressed juices and herbal teas are an excellent way to incorporate these foods and herbs. Grapefruit juice makes a perfect smoothie based alongside mangoes and berries. Try juice made with apple. Oh my god, I've never had apple juice before, okay? Be lemon and ginger. Or herbal tea made with ginger, dandelion root, and lemon. A piece of fresh ginger is easy to buy at any grocery store. Really? Freshly pressed juices and simple herbal teas can be consumed freely along with plenty of filtered water. Thanks for the permission, Kate. Herbal tinctures are also an excellent way to get some of these herbs in quickly. Earthly offers a tincture called Liver Love made with dandelion root, milk thistle seed, turmeric root, peppermint, and black pepper. Another great way to support liver health is castor packs. Castor oil helps break up quote-unquote junk. Why is it in quotations, Kate? I'm just wondering. And get things moving. Support immune function, restore liver function, and relieve pain. Castor packs are simple. Spread a small amount of castor oil on a clean cloth. Place it over the affected area and cover it with a heating pad. Rest for 30 to 60 minutes and then remove it. The cloth can be reused several times. That sounds hygienic. Earthly offers two infused castor oils. Of course they do 
which can be found here. And organic flax heating pads, which of course can be found here. And Queen can be found over here having a fucking aneurysm. Supporting your kidneys. Kidneys are similar to the liver in that they are filtering organs. The kidneys are most known for their responsibility to remove waste products and excess fluid from the body through urination to maintain a stable balance of its natural chemicals. Which again is why I say please don't drink your pee. This function is needed due to the importance of regulating the body's salt, potassium, and acid content, all performed by the two kidneys. The kidneys also produce hormones that affect the functionality of other organs. For instance, stimulating red blood cell production, balancing electrolytes, maintaining healthy bones, and maintaining an average pH level. Functions of the kidneys include removes waste products from the body, removes drugs from the body, balances the body's fluids, releases hormones that regulate blood pressure, produces an active form of vitamin D that promotes strong, healthy bones, controls the production of red blood cells. Signs of clogging kidneys! Ah! Oh no! Low side flank pain, infrequent urination, or excess urination, okay? Dark colored urine, feelings of excess thirst, or rarely feeling thirsty. Again, okay. Dry skin, fatigue, confusion, fluid retention, and swelling. And probably also semen retention. I'm just throwing that in there. Supporting your kidneys. Some toxic influences include overusing painkillers, salt overuse, processed foods, dehydration, lack of sleep, too much meat consumption, overeating sugar, smoking, drinking excessive alcohol, sedentary lifestyle. Removing toxic influences can help here too, especially with poor quality water. Filtered water with electrolytes added, such as electrolyte powder, is a great way to stay hydrated and help kidneys do their job. Hydration is so important. Avoid sugary drinks, alcohol, and caffeine. We got a problem because I'm fucking addicted to caffeine. Foods for kidney support. Cranberry juice, lemons, garlic, onions, apples, grapefruit, oranges. Herbs for kidney support. Dandelion, ginger, cranberry, peppermint, nettles. You don't like eat nettles? Me? Castor packs can also be used over the kidneys to help with pain and restore function. Moderate doses of vitamin C may also be helpful for short-term use. Like 250 to 1,000 milligrams a day. Overdoing vitamin C can lead to loose bowel movements and- Coming out of me like lava! And muscle joint soreness due to the buildup of oxalic acid. So it's best used in smaller, short-term, higher doses when dealing with an acute issue. Earthly offers UT Relief, which supports urinary tract and kidney health and contains many of these key herbs, including cranberry and dandelion. <laughs> of course they do. Supporting your lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is a little known system. A <laughs> little, little known system. So cute. Throughout the body that helps remove dead cells, toxins, and general waste products from the body. Unlike the circulatory system, it doesn't have a pump. So it is easy for fluid to get stuck, particularly when someone doesn't get much exercise. Lymph is a clearish fluid that moves through nodes and is carried into the bloodstream and filtered through the liver and kidneys. Science, everybody. Real science, she claims. Signs of clogged lymphatic system. Skin changes. Skin discoloration. Blisters. Fluid leaking from skin, fluid retention, feeling heavier, tight, infections, limited range of movement, problems breathing, problems swallowing, problems talking, drooling, fever, itching, chills. Moving is one of the most important things you can do for your lymphatic system. Exercise, muscle movements, is how lymph is pushed through the body so it can do its job. Walk briskly, swim, and rebound on a trampoline. Lymph drainage, massage, can be helpful for those who cannot exercise much in their present health. Find a qualified practitioner near you. Brush regularly too. Some people find that dry brushing helps. Long strokes with a soft brush, always toward the heart. To learn more about dry brush, techniques click here a uh, dry brush like a loofah to me but anyway supporting your lymphatic system foods for lymphatic support garlic cocoa seaweed brazil nuts only the nuts from brazil cherries apples Herbs for lymphatic support. Echinacea, definitely butchered that. Astragalus root. Calendula flowers. Ginger. Turmeric. 
A few other herbs, such as poke root, can be good for the lymphatic system, but are potentially toxic. So we are not recommending them here. Why'd you even bring it up, Kate? Potentially poisonous herbs should only be used under the care of a naturopath or herbalist who is experienced with their use. Could we not use any potentially poisonous herbs? That would be a lot better. Not many studies are cited here because modern science has not caught up to the historical use of herbs for lymphatic health. Damn it! However, historical data shows us that they are pretty helpful. Source: Modern Alternative Mama. Earthly offers lymphatic cream, which is infused with several herbs that help promote the flow of lymphatic fluid, which can relieve swollen lymph nodes or lymphatic soreness. Mm -hmm, sure it does. Supporting your gut. The bowel is one major pathway for final elimination for the body, but many people needing a detox deal with regular constipation and or diarrhea. <laughs> If constipation is frequent, toxins aren't effectively eliminated, so they can continue circulating. Regular bowel movements are essential for health. For most people, this means one to three times per day. Let one go! Signs of constipation. Passing fewer than three stools a week. Having lumpy or hard stools. Straining to have bowel movements. <laughs> Feeling as though there's a blockage in your rectum that prevents bowel movements. Feeling as though you can't completely empty the stool from your rectum. Needing help to empty your rectum. Coming out of me like lava! Such as using your hands to press on your abdomen and using a finger to remove stool from your rectum. Fun fact! You can poop every day and still be backed up releasing foods from days prior. Transit time may take as long as five days or more when eating the standard American diet. Bad. When food remains in the gut too long, it may become problematic. This may result in gastroparesis, leading to the growth of bacteria, hardening of the food and masses known as bazaars. Not sure if you're constipated? Let us introduce you to the beat test. The beet test is when you drink 8 ounces of beet juice to test your bowel movement transit time. You drink beet juice and wait for your bowel movement to turn pink or red. Ideally, this should take between 12 and 24 hours to occur. Anything longer than that is considered a slow transit time or constipation. Anything sooner and you're likely not absorbing your foods as nutrients. Improper absorption may be due to eating too fast, not thoroughly chewing your food, or poor gut health. Everybody poops! Everybody poops! Supporting your gut. Constipation is a bit different than other areas because the bowel needs support from probiotics and minerals more than herbs, although some herbs and foods are also beneficial. Probiotics are beneficial bacteria that help to repopulate the gut so that it can break down food, absorb nutrients, and get things moving appropriately. Although there is a lot of evidence for their use with constipation, many doctors still do not know about them or do not recommend them Due to a lack of understanding, the doctors lack understanding about the human body that modern alternative mama here uh, completely understands. Lactobacillus and Bifidobacteria denesis have the most evidence behind them, but everyone is different and may need slightly different strains. Prebiotics are foods that support healthy gut flora. They include dandelion root, onions, garlic, chicory root, and leafy greens. Most fiber, including fruits and vegetables, provide prebiotics. Be sure to have plenty of fresh and cooked produce to feed those good bacteria. Magnesium is a crucial mineral for healthy bowel habits, as well as for sleep, detox, muscle function, and several other body functions. It can help soften stools and improve regularity. We recommend either Epsom salt baths or magnesium chloride lotion. Earthly offers good night lotion that is infused with magnesium chloride and can be rubbed on the abdomen for relief. Of course they do! Castor packs can also help with reducing constipation. Earthly offers infused castor oils discussed earlier for this purpose. Yes, discussed on every fucking page now, Kate. Although diarrhea is also a concern, probiotics can help address this. It's not the same concern because it doesn't show that the bowel is 
belong. It can be addressed as part of healthier eating, significantly eliminating foods that may be allergens or sensitivities for the person. Bunch of food. We will continue this in future with supporting your immune system. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry guys, I didn't realize exactly how long this book is, and I do want to go through and debunk a lot of the stuff that is in it afterwards, so I do feel like we are going to have to do this in uh, two or three different parts going forward. So, please let me know down below if you would like me to look into Kate's other books in future when I am finally done with this one. That is, if it doesn't give me an aneurysm and make me want to detox myself off of the earth. Please do all the YouTube things like like, subscribe, and think about joining the fabulous, amazing members. All of the beautiful people do, and you don't want to be ugly like Kate, so make sure you hit that join button. And no matter where you are, what you're doing, I hope that you all have a fabulous day. Remember not to detoxify your young children, and vaccines are good. Take care. Mwah! Bye. Fuck you and this book, Kate. Jesus. Let one go. What's happening? What's happening? It happened. Feeling as though there's a blockage in your rectum that prevents. <laughs> I can't. That prevents bowel movements. Feeling as though you can't completely empty the stool from your rectum. This is gonna take so long. Why? Why, Kate? Why? Needing to- Needing help to empty your rectum. <laughs> Let me get through this, please, Satan. Daddy Satan, please. Uh, such as using your hands to press on your abdomen and using a finger to remove stool from your rectum. Fun fact! You can poop every day and still be backed up releasing foods from days prior. Yeah, that was hella fun. Daddy Satan, please. Uh.